So why did it take so long to lift the ban? Jean-Yves Duclos is the Minister of Health. He's in Ottawa. Minister, while this change is about men who have sex with men, it's actually going to affect any prospective blood donor. So can you start by laying out for us what will be different and when? Very good, and thank you, uh, Catherine, and hello to everyone listening. What will change is that currently the measures in place are discriminatory. They, they affect people on the basis of their gender identity or their sexual orientation. What is changing now is that we're going to have a questionnaire which will be universal, which will be non-discriminatory, which will apply to all Canadians, regardless of who they love or their, their gender identity, and that will be based on behavior as opposed to identity. And what impact do we expect this to have on the blood supply? Well, there will be an increase in the, uh, the ability of people to give their blood, in particular for those Canadians now that face discrimination with the current system. So it's going to be good and certainly safe for everyone to give blood, and therefore more Canadians will be able to provide their blood and more Canadians will be able to receive that blood. Any sense of how much more? Is there, has there been any estimate of that? We don't know yet. That will depend, uh, obviously, on all sorts of things which we are looking forward to, uh, to see and observe in the next few months. This being said, again, we expect the, uh, the situation to be uh, not only continuously safer, but better for all Canadians and in the absence of discrimination. Now, this is expected, this change is expected to take place no later than September 30th. Uh, Conservative MP Der Eric Duncan, who's been very vocal on this file, uh, is certainly welcoming the news today, but he has tweeted, it is still five months away and that more urgency is needed. What is your response? Well, the Canadian Blood Services, which is an independent and very rigorous agency, did ask for that time for them to set up the new system. Uh, we want everything to proceed quickly, but appropriately at the same time. So... They, their demand was that they would need a few months to implement that. And we obviously, Health Canada obviously answered and understood that demand. Now, your party campaigned on doing this all the way back in 2015. You campaigned on, on it again in 2019. It is only in the process of getting done now. So I wonder, can you really call today a win for your government when it took seven years to do this? Well, uh, let's be very honest. It took a, a long time and too long. Mm -hmm. What was missing prior to 2015 was investments in the research and knowledge that was needed to move forward. So in 2016, we invested uh, over $5 million with 12 different research projects so that science and evidence could be available to the Canadian Blood Services so that it can proceed. It could proceed with a type of, of, of exercise, a type of, of, of research and evidence that was needed to bring about uh, today's news. This, though, you, you have said, I believe you said earlier in this interview, it, it was a discriminatory policy. And your party, certainly your government, promised to get something done, yet it involved an independent agency. Was it a mistake to, to make a promise uh, for changes from an agency that you can't control? Obviously, that's correct. We couldn't control the, the results. What we could control was the amount of knowledge and research that the CBS, the Canada Blood Services, could use to make its decision. So that was lacking uh, prior to 2016. They have had that, uh, that support over the last few years. Obviously, research takes time. So it did take a few more years before they could gather the evidence and submit it to, uh, to Health Canada. And that led to today's announcement. Are, are you comfortable with the fact, though, that seven years for uh, something that you said was discriminatory? Well, we would have liked to have that decision taken earlier. Obviously, we needed to follow science uh, to protect the, the safety and the, um, the, the confidence of Canadians into our blood system, which, by the way, is one of the strongest uh, blood systems across the world, recognized uh, by many others outside of Canada as being so. But so it took a few years, but much faster than if we had not invested in the research that we needed in 2016 and after, so that now we're finally able to remove all sorts of discrimination procedures that were in existence until now. Okay, I do want to ask you about another topic before we let you go, Minister. Um, these alarming reports that we are seeing of uh, severe liver disease of, of hepatitis in children. We know that there are reported cases in Canada. What can you tell us about what you are being told? Two things we can say is that A, uh, the Public Health Agency of Canada is following the matter very closely because that ob that's obviously a source of preoccupation uh, for many people, including myself. We, we do have children uh, too. The second thing is that until now, there has been no connection between what the PHAC, the Public Health Agency, 
of Canada has been informed as being the current evidence and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and incidents in Canada, no connection between that and what we have been observing outside of Canada, including in the UK. This being said, uh, PHAC knows that it needs to follow this very quick, very closely, and uh, we look forward to whatever comes up from uh, this uh, important work that they need to do. I want to better understand what you're saying there. When you say no connection, are you implying that we don't have any reason to think it's transmissible, or, or, or what do you mean by no connection? Well, they're trying to connect the uh, the, uh, the reasons and the nature of that uh, that uh, those occurrences of hepatitis between uh, Canada, the, the connection between what we see from a medical perspective in Canada to what has been reported in the UK and elsewhere in the world. Well, I guess what I'm trying to understand is what what are public health officials telling you about the potential source for this? What what they what they say is a that until now they have had uh, no ability to connect what uh, has apparently been occurring in Canada. They are in touch with provincial and territorial health ministers where most of the information is located. No connection between that and what has been reported outside of Canada. But obviously, this is a matter of importance, of very uh, significant source of concern for many Canadians and for myself, certainly. And PHAC has been advised and is doing the appropriate work uh, to follow closely the matter so that we are uh, better informed as the situation evolves. The last question I'll ask you about it is just a sense of scope. Uh, I mean, are we talking about, what, dozens of cases in Canada, fewer than that? Any sense? We don't know yet uh, for sure. Uh, what we know that is outside of Canada, it would be about 200 such uh, cases. But as we said, now we need a lot more uh, evidence, both in terms of numbers, but also in terms of the nature of that disease and what it could mean for, for us in Canada. Okay, we're going to leave it there. Thank you very much for your time today, Minister. Thank you and good night, everyone. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.